Hello and welcome to our fourth interview on Renewable English. Today we have a super, super special guest. Probably our most famous guest so far. Um, it's Amy Meek, the co-founder of Kids Against Plastic. Hello, Amy. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. As you know, I am a huge fan. So I'm going to ask you a few questions about your charity and how it came about, if that's okay. Yeah, of course, far away. Fantastic. So the, the first question, which I'm sure a lot of people are asking at home, what is Kids Against Plastic? So Kids Against Plastic is an educational charity that I founded with my younger sister Ella back in February 2016, so about five years ago. And it's basically all about encouraging people to reduce their usage of single use plastic in ways that are manageable. So we run a Plastic Clever initiative to encourage people to stop using four main items of plastic, which are single use cups and lids, straws, bottles and bags. Uh, we also do litter picks, so we've picked up over 90,000 pieces of plastic out of our 100,000 goal. Um, and we also do a lot of work with young people. It's in the name of our charity and we're inspiring young people to take action for what they believe in is a really important part of what we do. Well, it, it seems to be working as well, I have to say. Um, <laughs> you mentioned inspiring young people, which is amazing, but what inspired you in the first place, you and your sister, to start um, Kids Against Plastic? So we started it when we were being homeschooled at the time by our parents and we were studying something called the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And they're basically these large world goals that were created by world leaders in order to tackle some really important problems around the world. And through studying some of these goals on things like climate action and life below water, we came across this really big issue of plastic pollution. And this was quite a few years ago. So it was before this massive media explosion that we've got around plastic pollution. And we had really never heard of this issue before. And we thought if we ourselves as ordinary people had no idea the impact that our lifestyle was having on the planet, then it's likely that other people wouldn't too. So we just thought, you know, if we can do our small bit to try and raise awareness, then that's something that's really, you know, it might make a positive difference. And we also saw that as the future generation, this is literally an issue that we're going to inherit from our parents. So if we don't do anything about it, then who's to say that someone else will. And again, as I say, you are doing a lot about it and it is brilliant. But I would like to know, so you've achieved so much already, but what is your ultimate goal? That's a really good question. And I think it's one that we still ask ourselves. You know, we, we basically learn as we go along with this. We are far from experienced campaigners. Um, I think there's, you know, still a lot to do with plastic pollution. And we're very passionate about trying to encourage more people to become plastic clever. So getting as many people and in particular schools and businesses as possible to become more plastic clever would be amazing. But also issues like plastic pollution, climate change, you know, they're, they're really not going away anytime soon. And especially in plastic pollution, we tackle one issue, for example, like microbeads, and then another one springs up from, you know, plastic in our clothes. So <clears throat> I think because these issues are far from going away, we also want to try and get as many young people equipped and inspired to feel like they can make a positive difference as well so that you know the next generation grows up knowing about these issues and also believing that they can do something about them. You, you mentioned something there, um, plastic clever. Now I've, I've read quite a bit about your plastic clever schools. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me some more about that one? Definitely yeah, plastic clever schools is a really important part of our charity and we've developed an initiative called Plastic Clever Schools which is about encouraging schools and students to stop using a few key items of plastic which are single-use cups and lids, straws, bottles, bags and also cutlery and instead encourage students to use reusable alternatives or use different materials instead, um, ideally reusable ones though. And the idea is it's a collaborative initiative between schools um, and the teachers 
and the students as well. And we've also put together a massive bank of resources from our organization and others as well to help schools do that. Um, so we've got over 900 schools signed up here in the UK, which is super exciting, but we'd only like that number to grow even more. Absolutely. Um, I mentioned to you beforehand that the idea of Renewable English came about when I was working in a school. Um, I think I refer to them as being plastic ignorant. Um, and I would love to, to kind of go back there and, and try and, and make more of a difference because when I was there, I was kind of, I was laughed at and mockingly called Captain Planet when teachers would use five, six, seven plastic cups a day. And, I, and I'd get irate and angry and, you know, they'd think I was joking around because I'm generally lighthearted or they'd leave the air conditioning on all day long. And I know that it's not plastic, but I was just, there was so ignorant of, of climate change and, and, and any issues like that. And on, on Climate Change Awareness Day, um, they printed out pictures for all of the, the school to use and to color in. And I was like, they're brand new pictures, all for a photo opportunity. So yeah, I think like Plastic Clever is something that needs to make its way over, over here to Spain as well. And I'm sure worldwide as well. Um, so you've started with 900. Let's boost that up and get it to 9,000. Um, <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> um, so what is your biggest achievement so far? Oh, that is a good question as well. I think that we've got a few things that are, you know, are personal achievements for us and also charity achievements. So we've had some amazing opportunities, like we've been able to do our own TEDx talk back in 2018 um, when we were 15 and 13 years old, which was incredible for us. And we also got a chance to speak in the United Nations in Geneva uh, in late 2019, which was also, you know, a once in a lifetime opportunity that I was really grateful for. So we've got some personal things like that, which have been, you know, really, really uh, incredible for us. And also, you know, picking up 90,000 pieces. Once we reach our 100,000 goal, that'll be great. But I think from a campaign perspective, having so many schools signed up already and also young people, because we've got a Kids Against Plastic team, which has over 70 young people um, included in it who are all sorts of ages, who are doing things to tackle plastic in their local area and who we're trying to support in their journey as well. And having that many young people involved with Kids Against Plastic is just really, really amazing for us as that's a really key part of our charity. Um, and it's just so great to see young people with the belief that they can make a difference, even if they're only six years old. Yeah, hopefully a few people watching will, will, uh, will log on. Obviously, we'll have the, the website and all the details uh, down there below in the comments box. <laughs> but it was cool for a second there. Um, now, something I, I am trying to tackle as a, as a teacher, um, as a lover of the planet, um, is how do we make our lessons um, more appealing to our students? The way I'm trying to do it is, is focus more on positivity um, and the, you know, the positive stories, the, the people doing great things uh, for the planet, people like yourself. Um, as, a, as a student, what would you maybe change or how would you do things differently um, to teach people about climate change? I definitely do think that positivity is a really big part of it because I think if you only tell someone, especially a young child, the doom and gloom of an issue like climate change, all you're going to do is demotivate them and make them scared. And obviously there will be some young people that are then spurred to find out more or want to do something. But the likelihood is that if you just tell people that, oh, you know, the ice caps were melting or the polar bears are dying, it's not really going to have the right effect, I think. So I think positivity is a big thing. I think also depth depth to learning because often with climate change it can just be covered as you know like I said the ice caps are melting and global temperature is increasing and the greenhouse effect which are all of course really important parts of the climate change issue but I think it's also important to properly explore the issue and the impacts that we're having that companies are having the impacts that we're having on nations that are contributing the least to climate change I think these are all really important parts of the climate change issue that really do get glossed over in school from my experience. 
Um, and finally, also, I think we really need to be careful that we're not making climate change uh, a debated issue. It shouldn't be presented as, you know, this is the, this is one argument for the climate crisis is that carbon dioxide and methane and other greenhouse gases are causing it. The other argument is that this is a completely natural cycle. <laughs> no, that, that is not the weighting to this issue. It's not, you know, there's, there's some facts that 90, like over 90% of climate scientists agree that this is man-made climate change. So we really shouldn't be presenting it as an equally weighted issue towards um, the scientists that believe in climate change and the deniers as well. I think that's also a really important part. Yeah, I, I remember seeing a tweet quite a few years back that said, um, it's time we stopped asking if people believe in climate change and start asking if they understand it. Because, you know, it, it isn't a debatable issue. I'm sorry. It is obviously happening. There's everybody can see that it's happening. Like here in, in Seville, for example, it's it, it reaches almost 50 degrees in the summer, which wow. is not pleasant. Um, I, I tell you, if, if you were here in the summer, you'd understand why Spanish people have a reputation for siestas because at three, three o'clock to sort of, oof, even earlier, kind of one o'clock to about nine o'clock at night, you just can't go outside and it's, it's, it's terrible. Um, so I've got a couple more questions. Um, the next one, so we're, we're looking at shopping this week. Um, and I know that when I go shopping, I get incredibly angry and, and we do our shopping in a fair few different places. We, we buy our, our vegetables from a local greengrocer, we take our own bags. Um, so there's absolutely no plastic used there. But then we also, when we do go to the supermarket, it's almost impossible to, to kind of avoid a lot of the plastics. And then you get home and you take everything out and then you think, can I recycle this? And it's, so for me, I, I was reading your blog the other day, really good blog, loved it. Um, and for me, there's the, these two issues of number one, can we even recycle it? And then number two is we don't actually recycle that much plastic. So why is it being heralded as the savior for the planet? Obviously recycling is the right thing to do if you can't, not use it but um can yeah tell us something about some of the maybe the myths around recycling uh, absolutely i think that recycling is very difficult because recycling as you said is a very important part of tackling plastic pollution and if we get a completely closed loop recycling system globally where all of the plastic that we put in the recycling bin is made into a brand new item that is exactly the same that's a key point so like a plastic bottle is made into a new plastic bottle then you know that is when recycling comes close to even being hailed as a solution the problem is that globally we're not recycling a lot of our plastic to begin with which I, you know can't just be blamed on consumers as well because it is very misleading what you can and can't recycle and a lot of the plastic that is produced anyway is single use like um, like a film that's used to package something and is very, very low grade, which means it can't be recycled in the first place, uh, which is a massive issue and manufacturers need to take some responsibility for that. But even when a plastic item is put in the recycling bin, it's often made into items of less worth than before, like a carpet or a fleece which, oh, you know, on surface level sounds like a really great solution because, oh, you know, this, this item that I used for five minutes to carry my shopping home is now being made into a carpet um, or, a, or a fleece that I can wear. When actually this brings along a whole other array of problems because plastic in, in particular clothing brings along the issue of microfibers, which are tiny fibers that are shed from our clothing whenever we put them in the wash. And synthetic fibers, such as those made from polyester and, for example, recycled polyester, um, you know, they, they are really prolific forms of plastic pollution because these tiny fibers have the same durable properties of, as plastic, so they never biodegrade. And I think that's why recycling is a, a really difficult issue to look to as the savior to plastic pollution. And that's why I also think it's very frustrating as a plastic campaigner to see 
especially companies and governments putting so much emphasis on recycling um, in order to kind of shirk responsibility from having to reduce their plastic usage in the first place. Because I think that's the real key to tackling plastic pollution. We have to reduce our consumption and you know, the amount of materials we're using anyway, never mind if it's plastic or paper, is massively unsustainable. So that is the root cause of this problem. And that's what we really need to address. Absolutely. I mean, I try not to wash my clothes ever. So, you know, I try to avoid any microfibers. Um, that's not true, by the way. <laughs> um, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, before we go, um, I would like to ask you another question. Now, something I imagine is pretty exciting for you. Um, tonight is the Super Bowl. Yes. Tell me something about the Super Bowl, and it doesn't have to be sport related. Uh, yes, as, as a non-American, I could tell you very little about the actual <laughs> Super Bowl. But um, we have been lucky enough to be included in a campaign called Defy Logic, which is by the, the company Logitech. And there is an advert going out in the first quarter of the Super Bowl, which features loads of incredible creatives from around the world um, who are doing things to tackle all sorts of issues like racism, environmental justice, um, education, a, a, a huge array of, of problems. And it's super, they're super inspiring. And we were lucky enough to be included in that, which is still, still crazy to say. So yeah, if you do end up watching the Super Bowl, you might see some familiar faces there. That is, is, that's, is really great news. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to say one other thing, actually, this just occurred to me now. So I apologize. Um, I imagine now, as a, as a parent, I imagine a lot of people say to you, I bet your parents are so proud of you. I bet your parents are so proud of you. Now, I want to take it another step away from that. Obviously, your parents are proud of you. Um, parents are always proud of their children um, because, you know, they're your children. I just want to say, as a human, I'm also incredibly proud of you. Um, what you're doing everything you're doing to help um, the planet, to help inspire young people. That makes me as a human very proud of what you're doing. So a, a huge pat on the back from everyone here at Renewable English. And thank you so much for coming on. Thank, thank you so much as well for your support. You know, we, we just started this as a really small kind of youth social action project. And for it to have come as far as it has is still incredible for us. So Thank you so much. And thank you for inviting me to be included in Renewable English as well. Oh, it's a real pleasure. And, and when it gets a bit warmer here, I'll be changing my hat. I've, <laughs> I've, uh, I've got my eye on a, on a fancy trucker's hat. So Brilliant. <laughs> that, um, when it warms up a bit here. So thank you very much for your time. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.